In this video series, we've been looking at a program that looks like this, a user interface class called Driver, superclass called Vehicle, and then subclasses Neon, Cavalier, and Prius. Now, one trick is, in the last video, I created an object of each type, but it's very hard to tell which is which here. Uh, this, is, this happens to be a Neon, this happens to be a Cavalier, and this happens to be a Prius. They all look nearly identical, except the Prius does output one additional piece of information, which is in Prius running in internal combustion mode. Now, for that, what we did in the Prius is we overrode, overwriting, we overrode the go method and we added this in Prius running in internal combustion mode. I want to do that for each of our classes, uh, but for each of our classes, I want to override a different method. The method I want to override is the toString method in class vehicle. And the reason why I want to override this is I want to say what vehicle type we have made. Now, this toString method we made a long time ago, and the toString method is what is responsible for printing out this gallons of gas odometer reading that we see here. So that prints out the same for each of our classes because the toString method is only defined in the superclass vehicle the superclass vehicle that each of our subclasses extends. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to override that method in Neon, Cavalier, and Prius, and I'm going to give a message that's specific to Neon and Neon, Cavalier and a Cavalier, and of course Prius and a Prius. So to override, I'm simply going to go to the class called Neon, and I'm going to start typing 2ST and then Control Space, and NetBeans realizes that I'm starting to type a name that matches the first few letters of a method in the superclass. So it says, okay, if you want to override this method, I'll make life, life easy on you. Just hold down Control and press Enter, and I'll go ahead and fill out the method details. And there we go. On top of that, it also adds a call to the superclass method because we still want to print off this information for each of our cars. We just want to print a little additional information along with it, and that additional information is going to be specific to Neon, Cavalier, or Prius. So in this case, what I'm going to do in Neon is I'm going to say uh, super.toString. Let's split this onto a couple different lines. I'll take the super.toString, and I'll put it up at the top. Take, get rid of this comment. Okay, so string, uh, object, or let's just call it state, equals super.toString, and then we'll say return neon space, in quotes, and then plus state. So that way, when the line prints out from now on, it will start with the word neon if it is neon. We can do a similar thing in Cavalier, okay? So I type T-O-S, and when I do that, I have to make sure I'm not within an existing method, but I am within the boundaries of the class itself. So T-O-S, and then Control-Enter, sorry, space and then Control-Enter, and that gives us our two-string method. I can do something similar here that I did in Neon, but I do want to make one little subtle difference. So cut this, put this on a separate line, and then I'm going to say string state equals super.cavalier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say string cavalier state. And by the way, state, state means what is the value or what are the values of the attributes of this object. So string cavalier state equals um, cavalier. And then we'll say plus, And then we'll say, uh, we'll say cavalier. I'll tell you what, we'll say cavalier convertible and then we'll say plus convertible, okay? And then we'll return cavalier state plus state. So you see, this is going to return the information that's common to all three of our subclasses, but it's also gonna say that it's a cavalier, and then it's gonna say convertible, and then it's gonna say true or false, reflecting whether or not the user chose to make this a convertible or not, okay? Very similar for our Prius. Let's go ahead and figure this one out. So TOS space, uh, control enter, and it overrides the method. State, 
equals super dot to string uh, string state rather okay string Prius state equals Prius and then we'll say plus uh, we'll say milliamp hours milliamp hours we'll make that two different words because we want this to be uh, readable in English Prius milliamp hours and we'll say uh, milliamp hours we'll let that auto complete plus and then we'll say uh, miles per mah okay and plus and we'll let that auto complete return Prius state use that overloaded plus operator to concatenate Prius state with state okay as a matter of fact I probably want to go ahead and add a space between the Prius state and the state let me go ahead and do that there probably want to do the same thing for Cavalier as well. So right after convertible, we'll add a space and I'll save. Okay, let's run the program and let's see what results we get when we create a Neon, a Cavalier, and a Prius. So first of all, we'll go back to the driver program. Let me expand this and let's remember where this two string is invoked. The two string is invoked right here on line 127 where we're printing out the value of the vehicle. We're printing out the uh, current state of the vehicle. So this is the after, and you see this is the before as well. Now what's really interesting here is you see this vehicle is a variable of type vehicle. However, the two-string method that's going to get called is going to be specific to the subclass, and we'll see that as soon as we run this program. Okay, so just a moment. I'm going to run. I'll go ahead and do a do a run without the debugger, and then we'll do one with the debugger in just a moment. So create a neon, gallons of gas 10, miles per gallon 10, odometer 10,000. Do you want to create another? Oops, I meant to create another. Uh, we'll go ahead and see that neon, gallons of gas 0, odometer 10,100. Up here again, neon, gallons of gas 10, odometer 10,000. So you see it printed out information that was uh, specific to the neon because our object under the covers is a neon object. Let's run one more time. This time we'll create a Cavalier. Yes, we'll say it's a convertible. 20 gallons of gas, 20 miles per gallon, 20,000 on the odometer. Go ahead and create another vehicle. This one's going to be a Prius. Uh, milliamp hours, we'll say 30. Uh, miles per milliamp hour, we'll say 30. 30 gallons of gas, 30 miles per gallon, 30,000 on the odometer. No need to create another one. Uh, we'll travel 100 miles with a reimbursement rate of 44 cents per mile. Don't need to create another trip. Okay, now take a look. The Cavalier says Cavalier convertible true, gallons of gas 20, odometer 20,000. After running, Cavalier convertible true, gallons of gas 15, odometer 20,100. Now take a look right after that, we have our Prius. Before Prius, milliamp hours 30, miles per milliamp hour 30, gallons of gas 30, odometer 30,000. In Prius, running in internal combustion mode. And then the after Prius, milliamp hours 30, miles per milliamp hour 30, gallons of gas has decreased by 3, odometer has increased by 100. So this is what's called overloading. This is also something called polymorphism, which is a very important concept in object-oriented programming. What polymorphism means is the variable type tells us what methods we're allowed to call. Very able, able to call. The object type, in other words, the object that we're creating here, tells us what behavior we'll get when we call those methods. In other words, the object type tells us the objective of the method. So variable type tells us what methods we're allowed to call. Object type defines the actual implementation of the method to call. One other note on toString that might be handy. This one is available in all classes. Uh, because it's defined at the very ancestor Adam and Eve class level, every class in Java has toString. And you see here, when I'm running through the classes, I'm invoking that method specifically in the context of a system out print line. Also remember this plus operator is overloaded. 
which means if there are numbers on the left and the right of the plus, it's going to add them together. If there's a string on either the left or the right or both, it's going to make sure that it's going to convert the other side, if it's not a string, to a string, and then concatenate the two strings on either side of the plus into one string. In other words, it just depends one string onto the end of the other. Now, this two-string method is so common that if we're invoking this variable called this vehicle, and we're invoking it where Java is expecting a string, it will automatically call the two-string method. So to be honest, we can remove that two-string. I'll do it just in that location. We can remove that two-string, and it's still going to work the same way. Let me go ahead and save, and let's run this one more time in the debugger. I'll tell you this. If you get it so far, go ahead and finish watching the video. If you're still a bit confused, honestly, you're probably in about 95% of the people watching the video, and it's worth taking a look in the debugger. I would strongly recommend sticking around for the rest of the video. I'll go ahead and leave the breakpoint where it is there. I'm going to add one more breakpoint uh, down here where we're doing output. Let's see, we'll snap a breakpoint here on 115. And now let's go ahead and debug. So right-click on driver, choose debug. Okay, uh, let me expand my window so I can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And we'll choose F8. F8. Okay, we get a prompt here. And always a little tricky to get that uh, message to come up. So first one, we'll go ahead and do a neon. Okay, and uh, F8. Okay, it's creating and returning a neon. It is skipping over the prompts. Let's see, I'll go back to that. Uh, this if test returned false, so it skipped the Cavalier specific prompts. This if test also returned false, so it skipped the Prius specific prompts. So now F8, how many gallons of gas? 10. Okay. And F8, 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 miles per gallon, 10 again. And F8, F8, odometer, 10,000. You see, we're just getting the very basic prompts because the Neon is a very basic car. Do you want to create another vehicle? Yes. Now we're at the end of the while loop. F8 is going to take us to the top of the loop, and we're going to execute one more time. This time we'll say Cavalier, and OK. F8, OK, create the Cavalier object. Now notice that this if test returned true. My vehicle is a Cavalier, so now we're going to go into this if test, which is going to prompt, is it a convertible? This time let's say no. F8, you see it comes down to the else part, sets convertible to false. Now, is my vehicle a Prius? No, my vehicle is clearly a Cavalier. It's not a Prius. We're going to skip this if test, and then we're going to continue prompting with the other prompts for a car. F8, F8, 20 miles per gallon. F8, F8, odometer, 20,000. F8, F8, do we want to create another? Yes, let's create a Prius on our last turn. What do we want to create? And we're going to say Prius, and OK. Okay, we go down to the factory method, create and return a Prius. Now, is a Prius a Cavalier? No, it's not. So we're not going to prompt for a convertible. I've never seen a convertible Prius. Okay, is a Prius a Prius? Well, yes, it is. So we're going to step through here, and we're going to prompt for things like milliamp hours and miles per milliamp hours. And then finally, we're going to finish off by prompting for all of the other things we would prompt for any vehicle. So 30, 30, and 30,000. And finally, we're going to say, you know what, I'm all finished adding vehicles. Okay, so we continue. Prompt for trips, distance to travel 100. 44, that means all of our cars are going to run 100 miles. No additional trips needed. Okay, now here's where I'm going to slow down a little bit. F8, F8. This is the first vehicle that we're running 100 miles. Let's take a look at what this vehicle is. This vehicle is the first one we created, which is a neon. Now watch very carefully here. On line 115, I'm going to choose F7, which is going to step me into the two-string method. Remember, two-string two is implicit when we're taking a variable that holds an object and we're treating it like a string. So when I choose F7, where are we going to go? Uh, looks like we went to print LN. Don't worry about that. Let me take us back. I'll tell you what will be a better example is line 127. I'm going to choose F7 here. Oh, did it again. 
Okay, and F8. And we'll whip around. And unfortunately, it looks like my F7 isn't allowing me to step into the two-string method. I'm trying, but here, let's see. Maybe I need to do... Oh, there we go. There we go. I just need to hold down Tab, and now F7, and that will tab me in. Okay, for the Cavalier, take a look. We're in the Cavalier's two-string method. The, the first iteration I skipped through there was Neon. Now we're on the Cavalier. We're in the Cavalier's two-string method. Take a look at line 32. Do you see how we're calling two-string again? Okay. Let me F7 up there, and we're in vehicle. So we get this one line that's common to all of our vehicles, and then we return back to our Cavalier. And if I mouse over state, you'll see it says gallons of gas equals 1.5, I'm sorry, 15.0, odometer equals 20,100. Okay, now, now we're taking that, that line that's common across all three subclasses, and we're going to add to that something that's specific to the Cavalier. So let me F8 over this, and you see Cavalier state is going to be Cavalier Convertible False. So we take that Cavalier Convertible False, we append to it, using the concatenation operator, the plus symbol, we append to it gallons of gas equals 15, odometer equals 20,100, and that gives us the final line that we're about to see in our output down here. Okay, so just a moment, F8. And watch when I choose F8 here, it's going to print a line after the after right here, F8. And that contains the Cavalier-specific string plus the string that we see in all of our cars. Okay, let's go one more time, and let's take a look at Prius this time. Okay, so before, we'll go ahead and let that print. And now run the Prius, and now after... And here again, I'm going to choose F7. Okay, notice that, uh, and this is something I hadn't noticed until I recorded this video. Notice it's highlighting two things, print LN and two string, and that's because we have two methods we could step into here. So I'm going to choose tab, and I'm going to tell NetBeans I want to pop into the two string method. Now let me choose F7 and watch the tabs across the top here. Watch what method we're stepping into. So F7. And we're in Prius. Once again, we have a call to the superclass method called toString. I'll choose F7 so we can take a look at that. Okay, there's that, there's that string that we have for Neon, Cavalier, and Prius. Go back down now, choose F8 to go back down into the Prius class. And we get the Prius-specific string. Okay, so state, gallons of gas 27, odometer 30,100. Prius state... Uh, looks like it hasn't computed that yet. Let's go ahead and choose F8 and let it compute that. Prius state equals Prius, milliamp hours 10, miles per milliamp hour 20. So it's going to return both the Prius specific values plus the values that are common to all of our superclasses. And now I'm going to choose F8. Okay, once again, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of our output and watch what prints next when I choose F8. Okay, the Prius specific line that's in the Prius's two string method plus the line that's in the superclass. Now we'll go ahead and just uh, wrap up the program with that. So I'll go ahead and choose debug and then continue and we'll let the program terminate. So in this method, we saw how we can, I'm sorry, in this video, we saw how we can have three subclasses. We can override a method from the superclass, but we can still use that interesting syntax the super dot method call to invoke any common logic that is in the method in the superclass that we are overriding. We looked at two very important concepts of object-oriented programming in this video. One is the concept of overriding. Overriding means we have the same method signature in a subclass as we do in a superclass. We also saw the very important concept called polymorphism, which means variable type tells you what methods you're allowed to call. So very able, what you're able to call. Object type defines the actual implementation of the method that you will call. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we are going to give more definition to this Go method in Prius, and we're going to give it the option to either run in internal combustion mode or run with the battery. I look forward to seeing you then.
thank you.